to welcome Minister McCausland, uh, Minister for Social Development, who is going to share with us his perspective on the Colin Early Intervention Community. Minister? Um, thank you indeed, uh, Rosemary, for inviting me to join with you today in launching this early intervention programme. It is indeed appropriate that we do it in Colin Parents Week. And thank you also everyone for taking the time to join us today to mark the beginning of a programme that goes to the core of something very important. There are people here from a whole range of different professional backgrounds. I come today as a politician. But what we all want to do, the thing that we share in common is that we all want to make a positive difference in people's lives. Suzanne has spoken very powerfully and indeed inspirationally today about the difference that can be made to a child when parents are really engaged in their development. That sense, you used the word connectedness I suppose, or, uh, it's about relationships and about that uh, relationship between the, the, the parent and, and the parents indeed and the child. And that's so important and about how that engagement helps to shape the child's brain development and provides the child with a map of how to constructively and positively engage with the world around him or her. The first three years or so of a child's development do indeed provide the foundation for the rest of his or her life. Now, it's something you have a sense of, but what we have got today is the, the explanation and the, the validation, the verification, and the explanation of what that means in practice, and that really was, I think, very informative and inspirational. I'm sure that Suzanne would agree with me that the concept is not actually new, but it is vitally important and not always recognised. Perhaps it is the most important thing for new parents to know and for all those around them to understand and include in this all of the public services that have a responsibility to support children and young families. The enthusiastic response to this programme by local and regional health and social care agencies and from government departments as well, is certainly commendable. As is the support that we have seen from local schools and the local community. I want also to acknowledge the support of Atlantic Philanthropies, which has been a key player in the development of the programme. Promoting a child's social and emotional development can significantly improve their mental and physical health, their educational attainment, and their employment opportunities. Early intervention can also help to prevent negative and antisocial behaviour, drug and alcohol misuse and teenage pregnancies. It makes a real difference. And I'm personally convinced that what parents do for their children is more important than the parent's social status. It's about time and spending time with the child. Especially in a child's earliest years, Effective parenting is a bigger influence on the child's future than wealth, class, education or any other social factor. Providing a child with a nurturing and supportive upbringing has an impact well beyond the life chances and well-being of that one child because many of the most costly and damaging social problems in a society have their roots in children not being given the right type of support in their earliest years. The time when they experience their most rapid development. And that development doesn't stop at the age of three. And it is important that support continues throughout childhood to help children reach the key milestones of social and emotional development throughout their school lives. I find this interesting because I'm here today in Colin and we've had the, the academic expert explanation. I go to a meeting probably about once a month over uh, on the Greater Shankill area. Of politicians and community workers. And funny enough, at the last meeting we were talking about early years. Now, that wasn't simply because it's one of the key themes for Jackie Redpath, but it's also one of the key themes for people around that table. And so the, the lessons you're learning here, the, the, the practical outworking of that, is not just relevant for Colin. These are lessons that need to be applied right across society here in Northern Ireland, and particularly in many of our inner city communities. So in many ways, suppose you're trailblazers, but it is important work. The economic benefits of early intervention have been spoken about. They're clear, and they consistently demonstrate good returns on investment. Trying to resolve problems later is much, much more costly. 
and sometimes you can't really do it. And they often cannot achieve the results that early intervention is able to deliver. The success of a program such as the Colin Early Intervention Community will require more than the simple delivery of services in the Colin area. It will require those services to be tailored to the needs of the community and to the individual child and family. It will require services to be aligned and brought to bear where and when they are needed. And that's the most difficult bit. Public services and community groups have struggled, uh, tried very, very hard to get this right, but we haven't as yet succeeded as much as we would want to. And that's a task for the Colin Early Intervention Community can, I believe, make a real difference. I want to see my department promoting more early interventions in disadvantaged areas. The midterm review of the Neighbourhood Renewal Programme recommended support for activity that produces results. And the evidence base is clear that early interventions yield the most significant outcomes in terms of influencing an individual's life chances. To that end, I'm pleased to announce Neighbourhood Renewal funding of £222,000 from my department to support the Colin Early Intervention Community. I'm very pleased, therefore, to be among such a community of people who have recognised the need to take action. And I'm proud to be associated with the launch of a programme that is intended to focus support on those that most need it. Regardless of whether the support is delivered by the health and social services, by schools, or by community groups. And I congratulate Colin Neighbourhood Partnership for driving this initiative. I'm pleased that my department is able to support your work. That sort of early intervention that you are able to, to access here at Colin is something that we need to look at being delivered in many, many more areas. And therefore I wish the Colin Early Intervention Community every success in the coming years as the programme rolls out. And I thank you indeed for uh, the invitation to join with you today. Thank you. Minister, all the nations gratefully received it. <laughs> large ones grabbed at. It, it now gives me great pleasure to introduce Hugh McConaughey. And Hugh is the Chief Executive of the Southeastern Health and Social Care Trust. But he's also here talking to us today, um, giving us a perspective from the Children and Young People Strategic Partnership. Welcome, Hugh. Thank you for being here. Thank you, uh, Minister, ladies and gentlemen, can I just say how delighted I am to be here? Um, not least, Suzanne, I particularly enjoyed your, your presentation. Your enthusiasm is infectious. Uh, the message compelling. Uh, I feel I must rush back now and develop a trust couple policy. Get <laughs> 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 me in the front page of the <laughs> Um, but, but of course the real reason is, this is a really exciting development, uh, early intervention in Colin. It is blazing a trail, it is groundbreaking, but most important of all, it offers real potential to make a difference. Uh, and that's the most important thing. We have people nationally uh, and internationally looking to see, well, will this model work? Right through from the, the, the partnership, the strategic partnership, right down to early intervention in local communities. And Colin's leading the way in that regard. And I think that's why it's really exciting and why I'm delighted to be here today. I have two hats on. Uh, Kieran will probably jump in and say big enough head. But um, I want to say most of what I say will really be about the, the strategic partnership. Because uh, it, it is quite exciting from a regional point of view. And while we're here today for the uh, Colin uh, early intervention community, uh, I think there is real potential, and it's one of the things we, we, we must look at, which is whether we can make the an early intervention region uh, and really lead the way uh, internationally. So, what's the partnership about, the strategic partnership about? And I suppose to really pick out one thing, the key message is it is to improve outcomes. Uh, and, and that is the most important thing. And the key bit about that is, it's not just focusing on the actions we take, but it's actually what results will we get, what will be the outcomes, and how will that make a difference to the lives of, of children. Uh, and it is multi-agency, and that, that's key. So what are the, the six outcomes? Uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to go 
through each of these in, in great detail. Uh, but behind each of them, there is actually a range of things that we're measuring, we're assuring ourselves are being delivered, and that we're setting out that we actually need to make a difference in. But just very briefly, being healthy, enjoying learning and achieving, experiencing economic and environmental well-being, contributing positively to community and to society as well, and living in safety with a stable environment, with stability. And above all, and importantly, living with respect from society and having, having a society respect the rights of that child and every child. So those are the six high-level outcomes upon which uh, all of this work is being based. Very briefly, and I don't think you get structures right, uh, but you can get them wrong, but here's a sort of brief overview. There is the, the, part, the partnership, and where I wear my two hats is I sit on the partnership, and one of the key things about it is it has brought together leadership from right across, uh, from statutory sector, from communities, uh, from government, and uh, from, uh, from voluntary organisations, so a whole range of people who are involved and actually bringing leadership to it and committing to it. There's a number of regional subgroups, but importantly there are five outcome-based groups. Um, so there's one that sort of matches each of the health and social care trust areas. And very much each of those looking at, well, what is important to us in those six outcome areas, or those six outcome themes, what are we trying to achieve within our outcome area? But importantly, below that as well, is it based on locality, natural localities, natural communities, that actually will feed into this and influence the shaping of the outcomes and the work that's being taken forward. Just another way of, of, of presenting it, and I say there are the five uh, outcome uh, outcome groups that match the health and social care trust boundaries uh, and then with localities beneath them. Uh, but also looking at sort of four themes where actually we'll try and, and influence the work as well. So what's the purpose of the locality plan? Uh, of which Colin is one of the, the natural uh, locality planning groups. Again it is to improve the outcomes from uh, four children by establishing that partnership by building with the, on the networks that exist there already and importantly developing community ownership and that comes across very strongly when you work with, with the current colony early intervention community and with the neighbourhood partnership and that, that's very strong and it's absolutely key to success but it's also about listening to children and involving children uh, and representatives and engaging that and families in, in shaping the work that we do and then developing services particularly around that early intervention that actually meets those needs. Um, a little bit cluttered that slide, but just to try and show that the two, if you like, the two almost sides of it, that the community brings that commitment, that passion, that ownership, that local knowledge, um, and the and effective involvement, because sometimes things in the past have, have perhaps fallen because the statutory sector has intervened in a way that it, it thinks is the right way and it hasn't actually engaged with the local community uh, and hasn't therefore, the community has not been receptive or it hasn't been the right services so it hasn't actually connected or delivered the outcomes what agencies bring is support, the tools, the expertise, the resource um, and probably most importantly and Minister also, thank you, the funding uh, which is, is key to it um, and so it's that bonding of the two together that actually can produce um, a, a program of work and ultimately the improved outcomes which are our goal. But, but why is this different? Why is this approach different to what's gone before? Uh, and I, I suppose this personal view but I think reflects the view of, of the partnership and many of the people that are involved with it. If I was to pick out probably four things. There's leadership and there's commitment from the top of all the agencies and all the organisations and all the communities that are involved in it. That it's cross community, it's across the statutory sector, it's cross voluntary, but also importantly, it has government leadership and support as well. Um, we had a, um, an event earlier in uh, September um, where the junior ministers from OFM and DFM were there and who were actually making a, a commitment to actually give government uh, and the OFM DFM support to actually making sure the cross cutting dimensions of this deliver as well. Uh, so right across um, uh, we have that leadership from all the organisations and agencies involved. 
it has very much has that government support, and I think that that's critical. Um, and hopefully, will be a keen region of the success. Next bit is it, it's actually it's not a sort of top down or bottom up. It's actually both ways. Locally, the local community, the locality planning shapes what we do, and that goes right up to the partnership uh, at regional level uh, and into, into government as well. But also back down so that we actually influence what happens in the ground. So it's 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 like really effective communication. It's two way. It's up and down and across. Uh, and that I think is one of the, the key ingredients to it. It's not a sort of top down. Here's the policy. Here's what you get. And it's integrated. It's cross cutting. It's across. We're we're trying to break away from that sort of silo approach where boundaries, which often are the, the things where fall, things fall down, where between agencies where there are boundaries. Either information just doesn't exchange, things don't connect, and things don't work as effectively. We're trying to get a much more integrated, cost-cutting uh, approach to it so that it, it actually works out. But above all, and it's the key bit to all this, it's about improving the outcomes for the children. And thank you very much for, the, for your own personal commitment um, and also the commitment of all your members of staff who are very active in the team and the community. Thank you. Uh, our last uh, speaker today is Claire Robinson and Claire is the principal of St Luke's Primary School. And Claire is going to give us, should I say, Ms Robinson, <laughs> is going to give us an educational perspective. Good afternoon to you all, and I would like to say it is an honour to be here today to speak on behalf of the schools of the Common Area. As a local principal, I am very proud of my school and all our achievements to date. With all my staff, I do believe we have the drive and the determination to continue to deliver a quality education for all the children who have been entrusted to our care. We want them all to thrive, to have the tools to learn, for them to go into the world and have fruitful futures where they can find jobs they love, support their families the best that they can, instead of making ends meet, struggling in the face of poverty, or having the belief that they don't actually deserve to be happy, that they don't deserve to have the kind of lives that most of us here today do take for granted. But this is the ideal picture for this community. As a school, we sit in our building every week and we talk round and round in circles about what we can do to try and make the problems we face go away. But the reality is we can't do this alone. All of us here today want the same thing for our community. We're all dedicated to improving the future of all those we work with. But working together, sharing our ideas, disseminating the good practice, the strengths of each of our organisations, then, and only then, can we deliver the services, shouldn't have used that word, <laughs> that our community deserves. For too long this community has accepted it doesn't deserve happiness, that things aren't going to get any better, and that it is accepted for people to struggle, to lack the confidence and drive, to want more out of life. Because sadly, that is all of that many of the people of this community actually know. But by all of us pulling together as one unit, we can learn to educate our families, their children, our young people, and all who work in our community, that that is actually a myth, that there is hope, and that if we work together, we can be the best that we can be. But this work has to start somewhere. At the time children come through the doors of St Luke's, we are faced each year with so many issues that actually prioritising which needs resolved first has become such a challenge for our staff. St Luke's has been very lucky through the Colin Empowerment Project to have a big lottery funded nurture group. To date we have been able to improve the lives of a handful of young children and their families in giving them the support and the strategies to make school life and the learning experiences less daunting and hopefully more enjoyable for all our children. This programme has been invaluable. And yet, with the end of the funding looming as a school, we are dreading the inability to finance the continuation of this programme which our school has come to depend on. 
With each new intake of P1 children, we see a rising demand for the, this type of program in our school. And it needs to be sustained to become a permanent resource for the future families of St Luke's and the Colin area. Our families need the support as early as possible. Each of us here today, we're all educators who have a passion for Colin area. And by going back to what we call in our school, the early, early years, and by breaking the sad and negative cycle, by teaching the parents and the families how to access support, giving them options to learn, the belief that they can do it, and that this community deserves to have a happy, fulfilled future, that there is hope, hope for all that live here, then the ideal becomes a reality. And the future for this community is one which is happy and positive for all the generations to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Thank you. And I think uh, building on that uh, word hope is very important to us. Uh, just as part of the wrap-up, I think there's one very important announcement that I, I do need to make. Um, and one very important acknowledgement that I need to make, and that's to Atlantic Philanthropies. And Paul Murray, who's here today, um, representing Atlantic Philanthropies. It's not just um, the fabulous award of £700,000 that they have uh, awarded uh, the community. It's also the help and support and guidance that they're giving the team as we embark on this marathon. So it gives me enormous pleasure to officially launch the Colin Early Intervention Community and ask every one of you who have kindly given up your time here today and will in the future, no doubt, to join me to start changing children's lives for the good of our community in Colin. Thank you very much.